breakfast. Uh, we've chosen a different um, uh, place to have our meeting today, uh, and I hope uh, that you enjoyed the view as much as I did. Good place to have meetings here because you don't have to get too hot and sweaty on the street. Uh, we're very lucky to uh, have my colleague Petra. Petra is uh, from the Czech Republic, and a lot of you don't really speak much Czech. The little old lady in the in the in the town that does all the gossiping. Okay? <laughs> so if you ever want to know anything, you go and look for someone with a, this family name, Vazpova. <laughs> okay? So it's gossip, it's research, it's what's happening in other places, and obviously we're very pleased that Petra has come from Singapore today uh, to tell us what's happening in other places. Because for people like her and me, you don't get out, you know, unless we go shopping with our wives to Bangkok or Singapore, we or Annie, we don't actually know what's happening in in Seoul, or in London, or in Moscow, uh, or indeed in the Czech Republic, around the region, talking at big retail conferences that we can't afford to go anymore. Okay, so uh, I will go and get some coffee now. Thank you all for coming. Uh, the um, the retailers uh, we like having retailers uh, for breakfast because they have the nicest handbags, the best shoes, uh, and you're far more eclectic uh, than our normal office. Uh, uh, tenant. So thank you for coming. Uh, we haven't seen much of you this year. There haven't been that many projects. The ones that we have been working on have either stopped or um, uh, run out of money. So it's good, it's important for us to stay in touch and thank you for coming. On a global retail trends and uh, there is a reason for it because lots of the retailers at the moment are looking at the world as a one big market. So how the retailers think and in many cases the developers think is actually the same regardless uh, whether you are in London or whether you are in Singapore or New York. So I have, I have put together a, here a short presentation about half an hour, maybe 35 minutes um, and I will talk you through some of the stuff that, that we see happening um, around the world and uh, what impact it has on, on Asia Pacific and on Southeast Asia uh, in, in, in more detail. Um, for retail markets at the moment, where we stand. And most of the, all the retailers, all the developers, and also the investors in the retail market has to take those into consideration. So I'll run through those very briefly. Um, slow global economies, point number one. We are moving into the decade of a bit more uncertain and a bit more volatile economic development, whether we are in Asia, which still has that very positive story, but the growth is going to be much slower. The debt is much more limited. Inflation is the issue. Higher, uh, a higher labor cost is, is potentially the issue. So all those needs to be taken into account. But on the positive story, the power is shifting towards east. So uh, Southeast Asia has the big advantage of being very close to China, and on the other hand, on the other side, having India as well. So lots of that, uh, lots of that power that comes from those two massive engine economies uh, will uh, benefit to Southeast Asia. Just to give a bit of a anecdotal evidence, China will be by, uh, within the next 15 years, it will, become, will become an economy of 70 trillion US dollars. So very large and powerful economy. Um, demographic changes. Very important, um, there, are, there is a bit of a mixed picture there. We have, especially in Asia, we have countries like Japan or China, which starting to see some bit of a change in aging population. And on the other side, you have Southeast Asia with very young and dynamic and, and growing, uh, growing strong demographics picture. So again, from the retailer's perspective, how to deal with that how to deal with the diversity uh, is something that will be here from our clients. Shopping experience, point number four. I think many retailers and many developers especially have to start to look beyond retail. They need to attract the cons uh, consumers and, retail uh, and the shoppers that it brings the experience that their shopping malls uh, would have that wow effect. But it's, it doesn't necessarily need to be big and shiny, but it needs to be very smart. And the retailers, in many cases, are adopting the same strategies. Impact of the digital world. So e-commerce, uh, online shopping, e-tailing, all of that is going to play a role uh, in the, the strategies, long-term strategies of retailers going forward. And sustainability, last of the, uh, last of the six key subjects. 
I'll run through those in a bit more detail in a minute, but also what I wanted to to bear in mind that the world has changed, that the retail world has changed quite significantly. It's not about the manufacturers anymore who used to produce the products and they used to be the power of the market. But it's not, not about the retailers, it's the people who actually sell the products. But the power is with the consumers at the moment. They make the decision of where they want to shop and what they want to buy. The market is so complex and so mature that the we have to think about the consumers. What do they want? How do they want it? Where and, and uh, when? We, there's, there is much more supply coming through to the market. Obviously, the demographic changes that I talked about. Uh, the, sometimes the manufacturers sell directly to the to the consumers, so they don't completely skip that retailer part of of the chain. So we have to be very very careful how to look at. But so what the developers are doing in this world? And um, Asia Pacific is coming to a point that we will have uh, one, uh, one billion square feet or 100,000 square meters of shopping space um, in Asia Pacific. The market grew very, very fast. And at the moment, there is another 6.5 million square meters space under construction in Asia Pacific. If I'll put, to you, uh, I'll put on the chart here, on a slide here, just the, some of the, the key South, uh, Southeast Asia markets, and you see that, that lots of the developments actually does take place, or is likely to take place in, in Vietnam. Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh are both in those top three markets. So there is a lots of activity, lots of development activity that, that currently take place, and developers understand and see that, that strong a young population and that's shift towards the consumer society and uh, seeing the, the opportunities there. Um, so I'm embarrassed that I have to ask this. What's uh, Klang Valley or? Uh, uh, that's uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur. So it's oh, a well. wider, wider the area of, okay. of uh, Kuala Lumpur. So it's not just the, the metropole of, uh, of Kuala Lumpur, but the bit of suburbs around it as well. Okay. Um, probably so I'm not going to have too many charts, more pictures than charts, but uh, still I'm a researcher, so I have to put a few in. Um, but what do they actually, what, what do retailers uh, see, or what, what does it mean for, for the retailers? And from their perspective, uh, the real estate market are cost, or the, the, the real estate is the, op 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 is the occupational cost. It's a part of their uh, part of their, uh, that side of how they need to look into uh, look at uh, look at their real estate, and we have we have seen that what's most important is the line actually on this chart where you see the the rents around Asia Pacific and how did they behave in the last uh, last few years, and since the bottom of the market uh, that bit of weakness after the global financial crisis. Uh, the rents has grown by 15% Asia Pacific wide. Yeah? So we put all the markets together and we aggregate it and it's, it comes 15% higher. If, you, if I would put the office rental, ch uh, rental chart there or industrial or residential, none of those would have such tendency. Retail does tend to go mostly up, up, up. Just with the new malls coming onto onto the market, they tend to be more expensive or carry the more higher rent than the older malls, and it does reflect into that overall picture. So the retailers, from the retailers' perspective, it is a, it is a potential concern. How can they carry the cost going forward? And they start to think about some different strategies in in the especially in the more expensive retail markets. So now back to a uh, few of those points that I highlighted and what, uh, what we see uh, taking place there. And I firstly talked about the economies and, um, and talk about how, s how s slow that, uh, that, that the market are likely to be going forward. Uh, China is, what's, again, what's probably the most important to, to look at is this chart which tells you this is the GDP uh, of the last few years and the other line is the GDP of the next uh, three years going ahead. And there are only two markets uh, that according to most of the economists uh, that will actually perform better 
than in the last, last three years. So it is a strong indication of where the markets are heading because even, even China and India is slowing down. Even, uh, even the fast dynamic markets like Singapore has, a, has a, a projection of a very slow economic growth going forward. While Vietnam and Thailand would be on the other side of the scale but coming from a fairly low, low numbers, but those are the two more optimistic stories in terms of, uh, in terms of the economic picture. But back to that positive. So regardless that slow growth that we have ahead of us, benefit, a massive benefit of Southeast Asia is the proximity to China. And within the next, uh, just over 20 years from now, China will represent almost 30% of the global economy. So 30% of all GDP around the world, of all uh, of the economic production, will be taking place in just one single market, which is on our doorstep, which is very close to where we are. So uh, we have to bear that in mind, and we have to, and the retailers and the developers have to look at it as, a, as an opportunity, how to adjust to uh, actually be able to support and service such a, such a large economy. But it's not just the future where China is going to be, but it's already now. Like, uh, if, if just doing a bit of, uh, bit of uh, Googling, um, if one of, the, one of the largest employer in the world, the company that, that employs the most, most people, is uh, one of the Chinese banks. The, the top five, uh, top th out of top five companies by revenue in the world, three would be Chinese. And I could carry on, and I could carry on how much that, that's how strong that, that the economy is already now. But much more important, it's not only about the economy, but it's about the people, and people in those economies. And what we're starting to see is that very important trend for the retail markets, which is the growth of the disposable income. And it's leading back to why Southeast Asia will be such an important market for retailers going forward. So uh, this is um, how many households do have that income above 5,000 US dollars uh, per, uh, per, per year. And you can see how, how sharply it's actually growing, especially in the last few years, and even including that what we expect to see going forward in the next few years as well. And uh, at the moment, or by, uh, sorry, by, end, by the end of 2015, in three years' time, 60% of Southeast Asia will have that income that can actually start to spend. So it's in, in population numbers, we talk about, uh, about 60, uh, no, sorry, uh, 600 million is the total population of Southeast Asia, so 60% of that would, would actually have that capacity to, to shop and to, uh, to spend some time in, in the malls and on the, um, on the retail. There is another factor which will drive the retail going forward, and it's the tourism, where Singapore would be a very good example of that. Um, and uh, it's very strongly promoted uh, uh, within, uh, within Singapore to encourage the tourism because they do come and spend, uh, spend money while they're visiting certain, certain cities. And uh, uh, just anecdotally, 23 million US dollars were spent by the shop by the tourists uh, just in Singapore last year. So it's a very important part of that bigger picture of what the uh, what the retailers can rely on or uh, will need to rely on going forward as well. So all in all, we have 350 million people visiting Asia <coughs> in the last year. And it actually has been growing quite in double digits in the last uh, last few years. Uh, but it's actually escalating. That growth and that, that appetite to travel uh, is becoming much more significant. So again, for the for the, 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 the developers, retail developers, how to attract uh, the, the tourists into uh, the malls is uh, one of the aspects that, that we'll likely see, see more of that going forward. Now, demographics, it's a much more complicated picture, I think. Southeast Asia is, has the benefit of, as I said, of the young population, uh, of the fast growing and still expanding, um, expanding demographics numbers. 
so uh, which is exception to be honest globally but also in the rest of the uh, rest of um, Asia Pacific uh, Japanese for example which is one of the again one of the big shoppers uh, shopping nations um, is by now the oldest oldest nation in the world and uh, just again few few high <coughs> high level statistics um, uh, da, da, da. 23% of population uh, is above uh, uh, 65 years old in, in Japan at the moment. So uh, you have to, as a retailer, have to start to think how, what do you actually want to offer to, uh, to consumers that, that are uh, already past their productive period and, and more into retirement. China still has that in the short term picture, has that very strong growth, it's a very big population and lots of people moving into the cities, however the one child policy will start to impact on the, on the country quite soon and quite quickly and the Chinese population will actually start to age um, at much faster pace and much sooner than, um, than what we've seen anywhere else. So again, the retailers have to bear that in mind or anybody who is uh, concerned about retail has to bear that in mind. On the other side of the picture, you have the Southeast Asia, which is complete opposite of, of the story. Yeah. And another aspect of what the retailers need to and the, uh, and the retail developers need to consider is the, the scope and how that the retail markets look. And Asia Pacific um, has uh, a very strong um, dominance or is heavily dominated by fashion, by fashion shopping. So that this little circle, sorry about the colors, they a bit washed off, but this would be our global number. So the, we, we take into account retailers uh, in the individual markets, we categorize them into those, whether it's a, sh whether it's a fashion, whether it's a department store, whether it is a house, a homeware, etc. Um, and you look at, so those would be the, the percentages for the global numbers, and this is the circle in the middle is, uh, sorry, is Asia Pacific, and you see how much more it is actually dominated by luxury fashion and the fast fashion. By fast fashion we mean Zara, Mango, Uniqlo, H&M, and, and similar brands, um, and how quickly and how fast they're expanding through those markets and going to going forward there they have very very aggressive strategies to get their market share and um, get uh, very well established in the markets uh, one more which which doesn't come up that well from this is uh, FMB or food and beverage um, and that overall Southeast Asia pictures for example is they represent only seven percent of that spectrum of how many how many uh, how, what the proportion in the in each department store but we think that that will grow so we will see that the proportion of uh, the retailers uh, who are actually in FMB will like, grow over time in, in the shopping malls like in Singapore it's the other extreme where almost 35 percent of retailers in the mall are actually FMB so you can take that into a real extreme where you create that, that experience when people come to the mall, spend the whole day there, not only to shop but to eat and to entertain. And on the entertainment point, the retailers have to start to become much more um, exciting or need to come up with a different concept, need to be, uh, need to be a bit look beyond the retail. So, because the competition is high and uh, they have to be able to attract. So I just picked a few examples there of what the retailers do around the world to be able to, to attract or differentiate themselves. Whether it's a funky looking grocery stores uh, or Puma opening a very unusual concept of, uh, for, their, for their brand store. Or 
how do you sell actually your products, whether it would be having DJs in the store to be actually able to sell the music or etc. So it is creating the experience, it is creating, and, and often you have to reinvent yourself to be able to keep up with that very fast uh, thinking uh, shoppers that, uh, that uh, we, we have at the moment. There are a few more, so you have to bring an, an entertainment value to it. So I don't, uh, Kids Mania, I'm not sure whether you actually, that's, that's still not here, but very big in Thailand, for example, or, or in, in Singapore and elsewhere in the world. An amazing concept, how to actually entertain your children. And I couldn't obviously skip the Abercrombie Finch, because how do they do their marketing? with the stores which almost have no light, so you can't really see what you're buying, but, but it's sold by uh, very attractive models. So a concept that really can't be missed. Yeah? And moving on to digital, I think, I think it's a very important part of what's, what we will start to see, and lots of people talk about digital and what it will mean. And probably for Vietnam it's a slightly different story, and we talked about it yesterday, when, when, when I arrived, that for Vietnam it's probably slightly more challenging given where the, the, the banking se segment or banking sector is. It's, it's not as, as common to have the credit card which you do need if you want to do the online shopping. <coughs> but it can change and it can change quickly. And the retailers have to think about that. And uh, globally, what, we, <coughs> what Goldman Sachs and one of the other um, foster uh, retail company puts together, there is likely to be over one trillion US dollars traded just in online shopping this year. And that has been growing over the, constantly growing, growing over the last last few years. Globally, interestingly, the globally the most uh, experienced and uh, excited uh, shoppers who, who love online would be South Koreans. So when we looked at that, that analysis, like who shops the most online, it, it's South Korea. But in those top five countries, or in those uh, top countries that actually see that e-commerce growing, obviously it will be China, it will be India, and it will be uh, uh, South Korea is, is the, the third one. Because the, the internet penetration in those markets and the, the, the speed of how many households have broadband and have access to internet has grown so fast in the last um, few years that in many markets the, 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 re the, the shoppers will skip that experience from going from the very local um, store which they used to shop their whole life straight into internet so they will s skip that whole experience of going into the malls and move straight into actually shopping, uh, shopping online. So it's an expensive concept for the retailers, but there will be more of it happening going forward. Uh, I'll just give one more example because I'm, I get always very excited about the online shopping. And Tesco would be uh, one of the one of the better or more sophisticated retailers that we have there at the moment in in the world. And they starting to introduce a concept of not the big box retail, uh, big box shops, but the very small convenient, uh, convenient stores, where they, will, they, they have a few sample of, let's say, their fashion brands, uh, but you have a set of iPads, and you choose, you take a photograph of yourself, you see everything on your iPad, you touch the material, and you buy everything online while you are in the shop. So you're moving from a stores which needed 10,000, 15,000 square meters into a store which can be size of size of this room while doing exactly the same revenue as you used to in the past. And there is that whole whole new industry that comes with online shopping. So applications, Facebook, um, websites, obviously. But all of it is to service the clients, to communicate with the clients, to, to communicate with the consumers. And it's a very important aspect that uh, especially the developers sometimes oversee, I must say. Again, I'll use the example of Singapore. And preparing for this presentation, I just went to Facebook just to check how many of those big 
shopping malls that are on Orchard Road uh, would have their Facebook site. There is just one out of those millions and millions of square uh, square feet of the retail space. Only Ion has their own <coughs> Facebook site, which is shocking. Like, how is that possible? Given how obviously how Facebook is important. Um, sustainability, last but not the least, I'm um, again big, uh, very enthusiastic about this. I think some markets um, have have looked into and so there is the, the desire from the, from the consumers to shop organically, to shop locally, to support the, the, the local businesses and local industries. So we, we are likely to see more of that, although again, you have to go through a certain chain of events. So firstly, you have to start to eat at McDonald's before you actually then go back to eating organic or eating, uh, eating healthy, more healthy. But there is another point to that, and Starbucks actually is doing it quite well as well, which is that brand awareness, which is uh, more towards that ethical shopping. So what they are starting to do is how their logo, for example, how they, how they uh, advertise themselves have changed over the last, um, I don't know, decade, when the last concept is that they actually taking away the name, they're keeping the logo, but you can open the store in your colors, in your branding, you will be still selling the Starbucks coffee, but you, you're creating that local experience, that bit more ethical difference, so you don't feel that you're shopping in the big, or you, you're spending time in a, in a big concept, which is the same everywhere in the world. So it is something what, what lots of the consumers are look for at the moment as well. Now, this one is a bit complicated to explain, but I'll try. What do we do, which, because it's very important, and, and it leads me to the investors. So we talked about what the retailers should be doing, uh, where the challenges for the developers are, but what's very interesting and important is who is the end user or who is um, when the mall actually moves from the, the developer for towards the investors. So um, investors, the real estate investors are starting to see much more uh, interest in actually buying real estate uh, or retail as, as a, buying retail as a real estate uh, investment for themselves. Yes, yeah, so basically what we do is we look at all the transactions that take place um, in Asia Pacific, like whether the investors buy offices or whether they buy logistics or whether they buy retail. And uh, take every single transaction, again, aggregate it into country numbers and are able to actually look at some of the, some of the trends afterwards. And what's starting to coming through is what you see on, on your right side of that chart is the markets and the sectors where, where we're starting to see more interest from the investors to buy into those markets and into those sectors. And the lime green is retail. So we, we see in the top few markets where the, that, that real estate investment is increasing, it's coming into the retail because it is the positive story and, we, and investors know that the shopping malls will bring them the income, uh, much more secure income than the offices can do, or uh, in some cases, logistics as well. So we see more and more activity and more investment taking place in the retail market. Um, so very important aspect. And the reason um, for that, um, again, this is IPD. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a company that looks at the performance of the funds. Uh, which hold real estate um, in Asia Pacific. And they look at how much those funds, uh, what would be their returns. So what would be, uh, how much is, is the, the portfolio actually uh, generating in terms of, in terms of the, the, the final revenue, yeah? And retail is coming up, historically has been always outperforming in Asia offices and uh, industrial. So, as a new retail, as a new investment investor into the market, it's it's a easy decision to make. There is much more potential coming for from the investment perspective to actually look into the retail and be the the, the owner and and buy and invest in the 
retail markets. So that would be in summary like a few of those a few of the, the key drivers and um, challenges and trends that, that would be observed in the market at the moment. But in summary and in looking into a bit more into the future and long term, what we are likely starting to see going forward. Um, few trends and a few things to be, be aware of, a few things to, to look for. And I probably just can read them out for you. So beware of the consumer power. So back to that, that original point that I made, like where we are in the, the, where we are, how mature the retail markets is, who has the power, who is the most important um, aspect and the, 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 in, the, in, that, in that mosaic that, that we currently have. And it is the, actually the end, end buyer and the, the consumer of, of uh, the product. Uh, demographic diversity. So uh, some, if we will have, let's say, uh, maple tree buying or building malls um, in Singapore and in Vietnam, but also in, in China, they will have to start to think differently in those individual markets, because each of those markets will have very different dynamics and a very different population picture uh, to, to bear in mind. Uh, technology, social media, I don't think that needs much explanation, but uh, it needs to come a bit more onto the, onto the agenda of uh, of mostly the developers, retailers are doing a good job in that field, uh, but the developers sometimes lag like behind, uh, which leads back to the communication. How do you want to communicate with your clients and with the, uh, with the end, end, end shoppers? Um, creating experience. The competition, we talked about how much supply is there in the market and how quickly the markets grow. The dynamics are very positive, I must say, for a retail in, in Asia Pacific. But still, the competition is increasing, so you have to come up with uh, a concept which is which is different, which which creates an experience, which creates something <coughs> beyond retail. And um, last but not least, uh, more flexibility for retailers. I didn't talk about it much, but I think that what we will start to see is, in some cases, smaller stalls. We will need possibly even shorter leases for the retailers because they will have to change and they will have to adjust to that fast uh, changing and fast paced retail world. So they'll likely, from the developer's perspective, need to start to think like, how can I actually accommodate uh, the retailers in a, in a way that, that they would be happy to actually stay in, in my malls? And a bit of that flexibility would be one of the one of the aspects that they may require going forward. Yeah. So, we'll run through it pretty quickly uh, because I wanted to give you guys a bit of opportunity to ask any questions if you would have. And um, yeah, opening the field if, if there are any questions. We have also a few people uh, here from, uh, uh, from the team in, in Ho Chi Minh if you would have any more specific questions for, uh, for uh, Ho Chi Minh city market. But, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go back to your slide about the breakdown of uh, all the different services within Southeast Asia and that's kind of the current, right? 21% in luxury, 7% in f and I'm interested to know what your thoughts are on the forecast of that. I mean, what do you see five years? Do you see that changing? I mean, to a certain extent, luxury in, in Vietnam is not a joke, but you know what I mean? It's, it's the, the, the consumers probably aren't there, right? Mm. So I'm kind of curious to see what are your thoughts on, on, on the forecast? Then? Yeah, uh, what, what our view going forward is that, that the key driver would be the fast fashion. So more of the uh, brands that, that are not even possibly in, in Asia Pacific at the moment, some of the big UK or French or, or American or Japanese brands actually uh, growing their uh, growing their market share. So fast fashion, mid-range fashion would be uh, would be the space to watch. And FMB, so new food and beverage, so the concept of um, how to actually, uh, yeah, would be growing as well, especially in some of the malls that have still a small proportion of, of, of that. We will see, we will see that increasing as well. Luxury, to be honest, 
it's still gonna grow, I think. Um, Vietnam might might be an exception confirming the rule, but if uh, again, if you if you look at uh, the, because we if you would look at the whole Asia Pacific and how they look at the world is the whole Asia Pacific. China is such a big market for them, and they haven't really been into tier two or tier three cities. So there is that uh, the, the the luxury brands will be probably more expanding still within China. You mentioned rents have risen across Asia Pacific by about 15% since the financial crisis. Is there anything to state how that relates to retail revenue and if that's increased yeah. in the same proportion? Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, was that rents across the board or only in retail? That was just the retail, no sense. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, the problem in, uh, in Asia Pacific is that the turnover rents are, is often very intransparent part of uh, the market and for us um, very hard to actually able to, to access it. So we really don't know because those rents that are there are the, the headline rents, so which is, which is part of the, the contract when the retail is signing. But what is actually beyond uh, that could be 15% extra in some market but it can go up to 30% in, in others and obviously change with the revenue but uh, it's very hard for us to really really say and we're missing a big piece of the, of the puzzle there because we really don't know how the revenue is actually um, linked, how closely it is actually linked to the rents. Yeah. I guess tag along with that question, how, do you see more revenue sharing in regards to the development within, of the landlords in regards to the being more, re not more reasonable, but kind of a aligned in interest, so to speak, with mm. the retailers? Yeah, absolutely. How do you see that changing? Uh, there will be more pressure on, on retailers. Uh, the developers will, although the rents are still going to grow uh, going forward, even the baseline rents, mm -hmm. there will be more pressure on retailers to, uh, more malls will introduce the, the, the turnover rents the proportions may actually are likely to increase. Um, so, yeah, it might actually go into the point where that certain malls will have will have a higher percentage than the others, depending on the footfall in the mall. So, uh, th 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 that sophistication is, is likely to actually go more on the, or the demand from the, the, the developers actually might actually increase. And mm -hmm. it's going back to the point that retailers may become a bit more hmm, Okay, maybe we'll take a smaller unit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I think we have, if there are no more questions, I think we have all your contact details. I believe that, that we have your business card, so uh, we'll be happy to send the slides through if you haven't seen them yet. I'm not sure whether they've been sent before, but uh, definitely we'll be happy to, happy to share what uh, what, we, what I told